Hello again, this time I'd like to explain to you a little device that we have in our in many of our professional camcorders, which is the electronic variable ND filter. In fact, let me explain to you that the first model that incorporated it was not the FS5, was actually the X180 and X160 that, uh, for instance, as of today, they have been replaced by the Z190. Why am I doing this video? Because in the new generation that we have for the handy uh, professional camcorders, we have also that device. Those camcorders are the PX, uh, PXW Z280 and Z190, which are the first uh, professional camcorders ever, ever to have a, a decroic prism with triple 4K uh, sensors. So this is a configuration that is very classical or very um, traditional in the ENG market, let's say, but it, this is the first time that we have that configuration with 4K sensors. The main difference between them, between those two sensors, uh, is that in the Z280 is triple half inch and in the Z190 is triple one third. Why am I talking about those models? Because as of today, we have had I think it's seven models that have incorporated the automatic, sorry, the electronic variable and the filter. The first model to incorporate it was not the FS5. It was the X180 and X160, so that is what I was explaining before. So, as of today, we have had it in, um, sorry, I'm recording, no, it's okay. So, we have had it in the X180, X160, FS5, FS5 Mark II, FS7 Mark II, Z280 and Z190. But uh, obviously it is incorporated in different uh, sensor sizes. As of today, it, it has been incorporated in the Super 35 sensor, in the one-third triple sensor and in the half-inch triple sensor, which is the one that I have, that I have here. So let me explain about how it works and what is the big advantage of working with a variable ND filter. Uh, maybe you have worked in the, in the past, if you are a, a, an ENG or a camera operator, you have worked with uh, the typical uh, ND filter that is basically two discs in which each one of them is a linear polar polarizer. So depending on the angle that uh, you apply to, to both them among themselves, you will uh, cut more or less light. Why? Why is that? Why do we need two polarizers confronted, one in front of the other? Because the light that reaches, that hits every surface um, uh, around us, even our eyes, our, our eye is, uh, is polarized with a non-controlled um, orientation. The light is basically an elect uh, electromagnetic field, but it, it is, uh, how to say, mirroring in many, many different surfaces. So when it attacks our eye, we, we can see many, many different ways of orienting that uh, electromagnetic field. That is why the first uh, way to, to cut the, or to control the quantity of light that goes through a surface or through a block is via a couple of polarizers. The first one is simply, how to say, a combing or aligning the signal, and the other one is cutting the signal. So depending on if both, if, if both filters are horizontal, for instance, in the horizontal position, the light will trespass them, but if I shift or I turn one of them, I am blocking the light. So in our cameras, what we are doing is basically the same but instead of at a macroscopical level, into a microscopical level. How can we do that? Through a liquid crystal display layer. Uh, how does it work? Basically, instead of moving two filters, uh, one respect the other, what we are going to have is to fix it, uh, filters, and what we are going to do is to twist the light that goes through the inner space uh, that is uh, confined by them. How can we do that? Through the uh, LC layer. An LC, if you could take a look on, the, on a microscope, it is actually like a, how to say, a chain of sausages, little sausages that are, that they have a little anchorage among them. 
between the one uh, molecule and the next one. So there is some kind of uh, alignment among them. Depending on the voltage that we apply to all that block, block we can twist them more or less. So we can make some kind of uh, helix or helicoid to the light that goes through them. So if, if we can understand that concept, what we can do is to put one filter, one uh, linear polarizer filter, despite in this case I think it's not linear, but for this explanation it's, it's enough. We can put one filter, let's say another filter like this, and then depending on the voltage that we apply to the LC layer, we twist the, ima the, uh, sorry, the light more or less. So finally, what, do I, what I'm trying to express through this shitty English that I am using is that depending on the voltage we apply to the LC layer, we can control the light that goes through the whole block. In fact, you are very used to, to work with this technology on uh, an LCD TV. In an LCD TV, what we have is a, mm, a background light, which is uh, uh, white, typically very pure. It can be LED, HLED, CCFL, so any technology that can provide a, a white, a pure white, uh, or the most, uh, the, the purest possible um, uh, white, that goes through that filter, so we are aligning the light, then goes through the uh, LC layer and goes through the other uh, polarizer. That way we can uh, work with the luma, with the, the uh, how to say, the, the gray level, and then it goes through the filters, RGB, that, that provide the chroma signal. So in this case, what we are going to do is to avoid the backlight. This is going to be right now our scene, the scene that we are shooting at. We will keep that block of ND filters. And then instead of having the RGB layer here, what we are going to have is the sensor. So that way we can control the quantity of light that is hitting the sensor. Imagine this situation that you are shooting in a uh, non-controlled environment, so you are not on, let's say, advertisements or, or cinema or series, but you are shooting a documentary. So you are, for instance, following a person inside of, of a building, but then you go outside and there is a, a, a bigger quantity of light, typically. So you jump from a situation in which the light is low and your iris is typically very wide open to a situation in which you need to cut the quantity of light because or otherwise the signal is overexposed. Someone which is not very smart like me would close the iris, but if you close the iris then the depth of field is going to be bigger, so the aesthetics inside and outdoors are going to be different. Another guy will come to, to me and say, no, no, please don't touch the iris to avoid that and you can play with the shutter. But if you, for instance, if you are shuttering at 1 by 50 and then you go outside and you change it uh, outdoors to 1 by 100, you are also changing the aesthetics of the signal, you are changing the cadence. So outside it's going to be much more like a video game rather than inside which is a typically video or cinema cadence or, or signal. So in that case we need to control the, uh, the quantity of light that hits the sensor as I was telling. How can we do that? By putting that ND filter that, as I was explaining to you, is variable because we can control the voltage applied to the LC layer. And that way we can cut more or less light that is reaching the sensor. That allows us to work in four different ways. Let me explain what I have here. This is an FS7 Mark II. And the menus are uh, addressed to the SDI out, SDI out number two, which is connected to an Atomos uh, Samurai Blade. So right now what I'm going to do is to record the menus. This is what I am doing right now to explain the four ways to work with an automatic, sorry, with an electronic variable ND filter. The first one is the typical way to work, which is basically using uh, the first position as one by four, Second position is going to be 1 by 16, and the third position is going to be the classical 1 by 64. So in this case, what we can do is to change, for instance, uh, right now it's clear, now the, the filter is not deployed, 
into in front of the sensor and then we go to the first position actually i would say it's not a position it's a memory because as you can see when i ch when, when i jump from 1 to 2 to 3 there is no change in the filter there is no physical change it's an electronic change right now i am applying a different quantity of voltage to the lc layer than right now or right now and if i go to the clear position you will see how the filter is simply removed from in front of the of the sensor so that is the typical way or the classical way to work which is clear and then first position 1 by 4 second position 1 by 16 and third position 1 by 64 but now imagine the typical situation that we have all suffered which is oh shit i'm inside of a building i'm shooting with a clear position but the moment that some person is going to go outside i need the second position for instance 1 by 16 or a different one which can be let's say in this case i'm going to to play with the value of 1 by 32 so in that case i can assign that to the first position and then when i pan the camera i can directly apply the nd filter how can i do that i go again to the camera menu in every camera is different but basically the way to do it is is pretty pretty similar i jump into the nd filter and instead of 1 by 4 i can go to 1 by 32 so right now you can see that the the how to say the values are not even in the sorted by by value but it can be 1 by 32 1 by 16 and let's say 1 by 128 so in this case i can jump from i can jump from the clear position to the first position which is 1 by 32 which is typically for outdoors and then i can jump into 1 by 16 so there is no as you can see, no increasing or decreasing value for the ND filters. That is the second way to work with it, which is with some personalized values to those uh, positions. The third way to work is via the uh, a dial that I can, it can be, depending on, on each camera, we will have all, always an, a dial on the left side of the camera, like here, for instance, or like here. But in some other cameras, we have also a dial in the uh, hand grip and that is something that we have also in the f7 mark mark ii that is pretty usual to assign that value instead of to the iso or to the iris or whatever to be assigned to the nd filter however that is something that i don't like a lot i will explain why i will explain why if i put it in um, in variable uh, mode which is through the switch i can play with this wheel you can see that I can go from 1 by 128 to 1 by 4, which is the minimum, well, the maximum value, actually. So between 1 by 4 and 1, 100, 1 by 128, I can go in, let's say, an analog or continuous mode, depending on the situation. So I can easily configure the value that I want. But I was telling you that I am not very fond of this way of working with the ND filter because I think that the operator has a lot of job when changing from one light situation to another one, working with the focus, iris, zoom, gain, exposure, blah, blah, blah. If I provide him another job to do, which is playing with the ND filter inside of the camera, that is going to be really, really stressful for him or her. So in this case, what I would recommend is to jump into the fourth way to work with the ND filters, which is simply by leaving it in a automatic mode. What, I'm, what I have done here is assign that feature to one button. So I go into the system, assignable button, and as you can see in the button number two, this is the auto ND filter. And you will see what I can do. Now it's in variable mode. I press the button number two, and you can see that I am in one by four. It needs a lot of light This with this uh, uh, ceiling here because I, I have almost no light. But if I twist the camera and point to a window, you can see that now I'm, I am in 1 by 64 or something like that. So it works automatically, which is very, very nice for, for documentaries, for even for creative shootings. For instance, I want something to happen, like, a, for instance, imagine you are using a macro lens and you are shooting to an insect. And then by changing the iris and leaving the auto ND, or the ND in automatic mode, you can 
by via changing the iris, modify the depth of field, but keeping the same light in, during the whole the whole footage. Or you can I don't know I was explaining also in the Spanish version of this video how to change the the iris in the eye of a singer or a, or an actor. You can uh, lift or decrease the the light, but you can leave the camera with the auto and the filter, and that way we can con we can keep the the perception of having the same light, but the ND filter is graduating or, or regulating the quantity of light that, that is hitting the sensor. It will be constant, always the same, so we can see how the pupils on the eyes are going to change, but we won't see any change in the, in the surrounding light. So basically those are the four modes to work with the, with the ND filter. Remember that uh, that curiosity that the FS5 was not the first one to, to incorporate that uh, uh, variable in the filter, electronic variable in the filter, and hope this was useful for you. As you can imagine, I made this video because in the large format sensor environment, uh, it's uh, it's very well understood. But now that it is incorporated also in the ENG uh, area or application people are wondering how to use it and I think that a, a proper, well proper, let's say, an explanation like mine could be useful for, for understanding how, how it works. Also as a curiosity, right now we have incorporated the uh, automa sorry, electronic variable and the filter into three sensor sizes, which is the Super 35 in FS7 Mark II and FS5 and in FS5 Mark, Mark II, in one by third uh, sensor X180, X160 and Z190 and now, which is the, the new thing, it's also incorporated in a triple half inch sensor like the case of the PXW Z280 that I have here. So again, I hope this was useful for you, otherwise sorry for wasting your time here, taking a look on this ugly guy talking strange English, but I, and that is what I, I wanted to explain in this case, so I hope it's, it's it gave, it gave you any, any value to, to spend your time here, which I really appreciate. So see you around, see you in the next video, see you in Twitter, in LinkedIn, in any, any other, uh, other social media, or even, which I prefer, face-to-face -face in any of the multiple events we have around Europe, and especially in, in Spain and Portugal. So thank you very much again, and see you wherever, whenever.